Yes. Okay. Live on YouTube. Oh, I have the wrong date here. Yeah, the wrong date on there. Yeah. On Zoom. That's why I asked you that last night. Oh, what date did I put on? Is I put the 15th? You put the 19th. Oh, shoot. It was supposed to be the 13th. Yeah. In the body of it, you put the 13th, but in the uh, in the heading, you put the 19th. Does it prompt, does it prompt the people? Um, does what prompt? You know, like when you go live, does it, does it send a signal? It should. Well for retirement, but I wish we had more cash. Well, Okay, it says I'm on YouTube, it says I'm live, okay. Still. I'm testing out. A new audio and video setup, so hopefully. I can hear you loud and clear the one. OK, good.
right, so let me queue up from where we stopped the last time. Let's wait a couple more minutes before we start. Let more people join the stream. Bernard. Yeah, go ahead. I can hear you. Yeah. Hey, when when you 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 got prompt to make you jump on or or what? Oh, I received one from WhatsApp from Dwayne, and it's also in my email. Oh, okay. Because the email said the nineteenth. That's what I was just asking. Oh, you know, I didn't even pay attention to it. I was just listening. I was just looking at the. Um, I prefer to just click on that link as opposed to try and grab it from my phone. Oh, okay. So uh, that might be an issue if anyone paid attention to the date. I didn't pay attention to the date. I was just looking for mystic knowledge. I guess I'm number oriented. <laughs> so I always look at dates and numbers.
All right, guys, let's go ahead and start. For some reason, my mic keeps dropping every now and then. I don't know why. No, I'll fix it as we go along. All right, welcome everyone. Let's open up with reciting a prayer for spiritual workers, and then we'll move into a Q and A session, and we'll pick up from where we left off last time in our review of the Mystic Constitution of Man text. Prayer for spiritual workers. Almighty God, I bless all those who, because of their limitations, would smite me. Almighty God, I bless all those who, because of their weakness, would not heed me. Almighty God, I bless all those who, because of their ignorance, would defile you through me. And I ask, Almighty God, O wondrous power, that your strength may be given to me now, so that I might be fortified by this, so that I might go forward bravely into the world, and despite reception, Send forth my love of thee throughout all races of man. Almighty God, give me the power and strength to rise above my comic weakness, the deficiencies in the pattern of my evolution, so that I might evolve and become stronger, I and even stronger in thy everlasting light. O God, thy will be done. All right, welcome everyone to another open discussion and various topics. I believe this is class 122. Hopefully everyone can hear and see me all right. I am testing out a new setup. So please excuse any quirks. As per usual, feel free to post any questions you have in the chat. If you're joining us on YouTube, or if you're joining us on Zoom, you can also use the chat as well as the raise hand feature to ask your questions audibly. Uh, we will answer your questions and then move into our study, our continuing study of the Mystic Constitution of Man textbook authored by Mr. Nehemiah Davis. And that will accompany our review of the Metaphysics 101 series on YouTube. You can go back and review that series. And in it, uh, Nehemiah covers a lot of the same information covered in this book, but in the, in an overviewed fashion so as to help us understand it. And when that lecture was given a little more than 10 years ago, we're going to keep, we're going to review that one. And then we're going to review a couple of other texts that go accompany um, some of the other videos that we're going to look at. So if you go back to our YouTube channel and you look at the playlist and you scroll down a bit, you'll see some of the earlier playlists, um, we're going to review some of those videos as we go along over the next couple of open discussion classes, as well as any other topics or subjects that you would like us to cover. So before we move into the text, do we have any questions or comments so far?
And I realize there's a bit of a mix up with the dates and the announcements for today's class. So we might keep this a short one today. All right, to start off, we have a question that was emailed to us. And you guys also have the option of emailing us questions that you don't feel comfortable um, posing during a live class. Or if any questions that come up throughout the week or when we're not broadcasting, you can feel free to email those to us as well. The question reads... If we don't feel energy going out the palm of our hands when doing the 12 blessings, are we still helping the world? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. Uh, I could tell you from my own personal experience, uh, sometimes people don't feel the energy, but you can, psychically, you can see the energy leaving them, even though they don't feel it. Uh, they may not have uh, developed their sensory perception to the point where they can feel or see or even hear the energy. Uh, so, uh, I mean, they can they can really work on that to try to uh, in tune themselves with the body to allow them to be able to feel, see, or touch or hear the energy uh, leave them because they made a mental command. Once you make that mental command and you made it properly, eventually the energy is going to flow. And if you've been doing it for a while, the energy is flowing. So uh, I do believe you are helping the world but you know uh by releasing that energy hopefully the energy is quality energy and that um uh, it's not too discolored if you're following all the rules uh because when you when you perform that mudra and you make a mental command then the same way you make a mental command to to release sound from your from your mouth, that's it's that's a, that's energy. You you just called on energy in order to in order to release that sound. So you should be you should be doing this. Uh, the, the same thing happens when you make a mental command to call on um, subtle energy. So. I do believe that uh, it's happening. And I hope that answers your question. So uh, uh, let, let, let me add something else on to that too. That, uh, The, one of the goals of, of a mystic or a yogi is to condition the mind and the body in order to, uh, in order to become sensitive enough for the subtle energy that's the driving force which is the driving life force uh, of our uh, existence, either here on the physical plane or any other realm, either astral plane, the etheric planes, the mental planes. So the thing that the the thing that that slows us down is is the conditions that we created for ourselves. So all the 
all the obstruction that we are uh, experiencing is, is roadblocks that we put up for ourselves, such as uh, ignorance is one of the main things. Uh, emotions, emotions, a lot of times emotions come from uh, misunderstanding. So, so one of the things that, that, that we need to do is to is to clear up those obstructions. Now, I, in the past, I, I explained to you all that the naughty pathways is the pathways is like the highway for mental and vital energy. And mental and vital energy coming together uh, creates uh, consciousness, but they have to come together in a certain uh, uh, formation. And when it comes together, when it cross section, it creates it, it creates the ability uh, to to form a consciousness that can translate um, mind, uh, sound, uh, light, and movement. So you know you learn those principles, and you can you can find or create a pathway to to allow this subtle energy to do anything for you. Because the same way you can tell your body to stand up and walk, stand up and talk, you know, uh, uh, sit down and talk, uh, drive a car, it's the same way you can tell the body to release spiritual energy to the world. It's the same process. All right. The same thing with healing, like even if you don't feel the energy flowing in your, and you're performing uh, contact healing. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with healing. You get, you know, I mean, just one ounce of clairvoyance, you can see the energy come because of that, because of that person is sincere and they, and, and they really want to help that person, uh, and, you know, it, the power, you know, one of the secrets of moving energy is impersonal, uh, impersonal connection to that person because you tap into the higher aspects of love energy, and love energy is the thing that allows uh, energy to build up and move at rapid speed, and and reach out and touch another uh, another uh, individual or object or whatever. Uh, because because you it's it's like your consciousness rise to a to a certain level. I don't know if you felt uh, sometimes when you doing the twelve blessings or or the mystic form of prayer that Dr. George King gave us. Sometimes you feel your consciousness rise above the body. Yes. And 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 while you praying or sending the energy out, and you don't feel yourself in the body, but you feel like the body is is uh is pushing out uh is have, have became a vessel to allow the energy to flow and in healing is like that as well so so it's 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 real it's it's real i know for me it's sometimes not all very rarely sometimes all uh, if I'm visualizing like a color, for example, the, the violent flame, for example, um, sometimes I'll have difficulty holding on to that color. Like I'll see a view as violent and then it just the violent will kind of fade. I'll just remind myself, oh, it's violent and keep holding on to that color of that particular uh, visualization I'm trying to do. Is that just an issue with concentration or is there something else? Yeah, in time you'll do that. In fact, one of the things I was taught is that the man that the man that it is that color, believe that it is that color because you gave the command. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you wouldn't struggle with that because you will you begin to see it. You know, like in, in pranayama, when mm -hmm. you when you begin your deep breathing practices, mm -hmm. bring the energy down, uh, uh, down through the nostrils and the head. And you and you take the energy all the way down to the base of the spine, 
and then you imagine that the energy is coming back up uh, uh, within the, uh, the, the, the spine, although it's not happening. But what it is, what is happening is that on the energy is coming back up and it's coming back up on because it can't break through uh, the, the, uh, the inner core of Shoshana. But what it does, it rides the, the, uh, the outside of Shoshana. And mm-hmm. when it comes back up, it, it comes back up and it comes, it comes out six inches in front of the forehead because that's what you, you made that command. So the energy follow your command. And even though you don't imagine it, and one day you're going to see the energy shoot out <laughs> while your eyes are closed, you're going to see it shoot out the forehead. Mm-hmm. And eventually it happens. You, you continually see the light. And then what happens, you have that light show. And once you gain control over that energy, once that energy is used to uh, following your commands, one day it will go up uh, uh, the, it will unravel the Kundalini or, mm-hmm. part, or part of the Kundalini and it will enter Shushuna and it will go up and the light show will be, it, it will be multiple light shows. So, so you don't have to force it so much because the energy is a force itself. You gave the command, it must follow the command once you once you tune into who you really are, once you once you connect with that energy and demand that energy to move, you know it's going to be used to following directions. So you you know you you, you don't really have to force it. You just have to continue continually create that momentum until it it, it the energy and you become one, mm-hmm. become one with the mind the mind that you're operating on, the, the, the conscious level that you're operating on. Because your consciousness will, will begin to reconfigure and move to a higher level and have a greater intensity on the subtle energies of the body. And it won't be, because right now, most of the energy in the body is automatic. It's working on, on the subconscious level. Mm-hmm. But and it's working on the conscious and the, the conscious, unconscious, and subconscious level. And when you begin to take control over the conscious level, it will merge with the superconscious level, you know, and then you'll have greater control over the energy. And just a quick uh, check if you guys on YouTube can let me know. If- I'm experiencing any audio or video issues so far. I'm seeing them pop up on my side, but I'm trying to catch them before you guys experience it. But let me know if there's any issues so far. I do have a question on prayer since we're kind of talking about the subject. I've noticed there, well, obviously there's a difference, right? When we're doing um, one of the pre-written prayers, like reciting a prayer from the 12 blessings, or when we're doing an inspirational prayer and when we're just um, kind of making it up as we go. And for example, if I'm doing a prayer from the 12 blessings, I can, you definitely feel the power from the more you give into it, the more you're able to pull out of it. I know sometimes with an inspirational prayer, there's a different type of shift where sometimes I'll let the words come, but sometimes there are no words and it's just and just standing there radiating for a few seconds until more words come. Yeah, what, one of the things about the, uh, the prayers that, uh, that Dr. George King gave us and the Master Jesus and, and other cosmic masters is that they are balanced prayers. If you analyze the prayers and the words 
even the words, even the numerological, uh, uh, if you do numerology on it, you it'll blow your blow your mind away mm -hmm. uh, because it's so balanced. So yeah, that's one of the differences. That's why Dr. George King uh, gave us uh, a method of how to create an inspiration of prayer. And because it's it's uh, the prayer have to be balanced, you know, in and uh, and that's one of the secrets of it. And the prayer being balanced is uh, one of the secrets is the, uh, uh, he gave us when talking about inspiration of balance is that you, you know, you make a sacrifice. And, and uh, one of the things you have, you, you acknowledge that God is all and that, and that the law of God is perfect and then then you make uh an a you give up something in order to gain something and i think he talks about that in inside his uh his his uh uh personal prayer he have two lecture tapes on on uh on personal prayer mm -hmm. he gives you the secret to creating a balanced prayer I'm not getting any feedback from you guys on YouTube. So can you, if you're watching on YouTube, can you please let me know that you're there? And one and two, if you can hear both my and Nehemiah's audio. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Do you have any additional questions? I was waiting for more questions to come. I did have one burning question. Um, regarding the latest uh, members audio series tape. And in that tape, uh, Dr. George King says that if there is energy on the higher spiritual realms, if that energy is not used, then it is propagated out um, throughout the solar system and galaxy and beyond. And he said that the you know, space is not empty. It's actually filled with um, energies flowing, interchanging, and moving back and forth. I remember you saying before that uh, for we're able to recognize a, 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 a small or gross aspect of that by looking at the solar plasmic field as it propagates throughout the solar system. But I was I was kind of curious what the what the view is on the higher realms because. Um, here on, on this realm, we look out into space, it's kind of black, dark, purplish, and just twinkling of stars, but we don't really see or perceive that uh, flowing of energies back and forth. Is it very different on the higher realms? Yeah, I, I think Dr. King uh, was, yeah, I think it's Dr. King kind of gave us a glance of, of how it looks mm -hmm. on, on the higher realms. Uh, was which is very few people live on micro mm -hmm. but uh in the in the day the gods came book uh uh what it, what's the last uh it was like a two-page statement uh he wrote about the future remember the dawn of uh what was the name of it a, a, a bright new dawn or something? a bright new dawn dawn and, and remember the last thing he said, when you look up into the sky, you will see multiple colors. Mm -hmm. Remember? 
I think so. Yeah. So he was describing that's in, in, in the higher realms, you can see multiple levels simply because your higher consciousness is higher. You can see the, the many layers of, uh, of, uh, of energy flow. Mm -hmm. This life for flow or this life force that's leaving the earth and the life force that's being absorbed by the earth. You, you see this exchange of energy there. So what what would happen if that that energy on the higher realms, since it's so um, sparsely populated, instead of leaving the earth, it would remain it kind of and just flow down to the lower realms. Would that cause issues? Um, I'm sure it will cause issues. You know uh, what we're told. We're told that. Uh, If, if a cosmic master came among us and did not have the, uh, the special gear to protect us, what would happen to us? You remember? I said we would burn up or we would? Yeah. <laughs> we can be destroyed. It's the mm -hmm. same way, it's the same way when some people have uh, 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 just on a small level, they have a, a spontaneous rise of Kundalini. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes their whole physical body, they like a combustion of, uh, uh, of energy, which destroys their whole physical body. And, and part of their astral body and, and, uh, and etheric body. Mm -hmm. if they not if they have a condition their body to receive that so so that's why there's a they, they you know there's a protection and there's there's even cosmic masters that that monitor the uh the veil between all the realms to make sure the proper uh and of course the diva kingdom does that as well to make sure that the proper uh, exchange of energy is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so are there any questions? Any questions or any comments? Oops, I just lost the stream. Okay, I think we're still live. Okay, good. All right. Andrea is saying the body cells kind of work in the same way. The membranes transfer and regulate the in and outflow of the cells. Yeah, that's true. But science is science. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a law. It follows the law of karma. So it, the same way things work on, on, on one plane, it works on another plane. It might be slightly different, but it's still following the same laws. Might have, might be at a at a higher level of uh, of frequency, but it's still following the same laws. The same way on this physical plane, uh, the sun the sun uh, hits the earth, and fifty percent of the sunlight is reflected back out into space. You know. So, you know, through, you know, with the ocean and with the, uh, the glaciers uh, on the mountaintops. Mm -hmm. 
So a, a, a lot of the sun is reflected back out. If the, if the envelope, if the, uh, the atmosphere was to contain all that heat, we probably wouldn't be able to live here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have another question uh, regarding, and guys, don't, um, just because I'm asking questions doesn't mean you guys cannot, if you're joining us on YouTube or on Zoom, feel free to ask any questions you may have, and we'll post them as well, and eventually we'll, we'll move into the study, continuing our study of uh, the Misconstitution of Man textbook. Uh, we just we just finished celebrating Operation Earthlight, I believe. Yes, Operation Earthlight. And conceptually, I understand the significance of releasing that energy uh, to the to the higher. Uh, or I think I understand the significance of releasing that energy to the higher Divic Kingdom. But could you could you explain the significance of, of why Earthlight was such an important mission? Well, to my understanding, I think that it's uh, by 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 doing a token, because remember, yes, it was a token. Process, it was a token. Uh, by doing that, that helps to balance the comma, and it it actually helps to uh, uh, alleviate you know, the blow uh, to mankind who, the mankind who wants to stay here and probably will stay here and then some mankind will have to leave. So, but I think, I think it helps to soften the blow once the earth, uh, I mean, once the mother earth released that, that initiatory energy. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, the earth will have will go through some type of metamorphosis uh, where where the uh, the seasons won't be what it is. Maybe the earth might have the energy to, to move closer to the sun uh, out of the, what they, the scientists call the Goldilocks. Uh, <laughs> the Goldilocks zone, yes. Zone, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the earth may move, may shift. So the the initiation, the initiation of the Mother Earth, when she received that energy, is up to her how she released that energy, mm -hmm. according to comic law. But you can you can always help to manipulate that comma by by doing what uh, Dr. George King suggested, and the Cosmic Masters suggested, spiritual hierarchy as well, uh, that you know, that to, uh, by making that gesture, it's the same way if you go back in ancient times and you go back to uh, the science of, uh, of yoga, mm -hmm. uh, real yoga, uh, that uh, their understanding of the divas, if they, if they took a, if, if they made a plate for themselves, they took 25% of that, that, uh, sometime up to one third of that that food and set it aside and dedicated that to the divas mm -hmm. and the other they ate you know and that was like a token to you know to the divas uh you know so because why the divas manipulate the thoughts and actions of mankind and animals and that's what helped create the reality in which we live in. So when you recognize them, you give them energy. When you when you make that token offer, you give them energy. That's that's a greater positive energy because why? It's an impersonal act. 
like I was saying earlier, one of the things that the greatest energy is when you do something on a on an impersonal level where you have no you have no connection, you have no real connection for doing it. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it in order to create a greater balance for the world or for the environment, other than yourself or your family or your kids, you know, your your uh, your immediate family or your extended family. So if we're to actively uh, send energy to the divas of the high diva kingdom, or just, just to the divas in general, we're in a essence taking on the role of a thanksgiver. And yeah, well, when, when, you, when, when you do the 12 blessings, you're taking on the role of a thanksgiver. You, you've given them positive energy to work with. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason for doing the 12 blessings. You know, because you, you know, re you're releasing spiritual energy into the atmosphere uh, to, that, that the divas can use to uh, fight back uh, the negativity that we built up over the last 18 million years. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one of the reasons for releasing spiritual energy. Do we have any other questions, comments before I move into the continuation, I think it was of chapter seven, I think we stopped halfway through chapter seven at the base of the spine. We're moving into a detailed study of the chakra system or chapter seven is uh, on the chakra system and we stopped at uh, the base of the spine. All right, there's no, there are not currently any questions. Let us continue reading through the Mystic Constitution of Man textbook. And this is going along with our review of Metaphysics 101 series. Remember, if you go back on the YouTube playlist, if you scroll down a bit, you'll see that series almost given, given almost 10 years ago. So we're going to go through excerpts of that. Next time, I'll go back to that video. I think we're going to finish chapter seven today. And so next time, I'll go back to that, uh, to the transcript of that, cover more of the information in that uh, in video in session one, and then eventually move on to session two. And so, so that will be in tow with the textbook as well as the 101 series. And I think eventually... Uh, where the 101 series leaves off, we'll move into another series, but we'll continue with the textbook as well as include other sources to help us better understand the information as well as present maybe some diagrams and illustrations that weren't available at the time when those lectures were given. We would present them as we continue our study. But even though as I'm reading through 
the text, feel free to post any questions or comments you have in the chat or use the raise hand feature on if you're joining us via Zoom. And we'll still answer those questions for you. Okay. The base of the spine. So this is chapter seven. Chapter seven is talking about the chakra system. And we're picking up with the base of the spine. The base of the spine chakra, Mulahara chakra, is where the power of Shakti found its level of equilibrium after falling or manifesting itself from the Shiva power. This equilibrium We lost your voice. And that power and source was the absolute. Now this absolute God is the source of all things in a pure static state of being, motionless, but with the potential of all motion. It possesses all power, but manifests no power. It makes no sound, but has the ability to make all sounds. It is omnipresence, but its presence is not heard or seen, but is the background for all things. It is pure consciousness, and yet it has no consciousness because it is above this. I'm going to have to switch mics because this one keeps going out. One second. Can you still hear me? Yeah. The tantric philosophy called it Shiva, a pure state of power. This Shiva took from itself a power that was the opposite of its pure state of power. And it's called Shakti power. Now the Shakti power moves forward and produces this thing we call creation. The Shakti manifested itself as Shakti omniscient, Shakti mind, Shakti prana, Shakti sound, and Shakti love, the power of preservation. This Shakti power is that thing we know as creation. Now when this Shakti power split itself from the Shiva, the crown chakra or the Saharasara chakras and falls to the base of the spine chakra, the Mulahara chakra, on its way down, it stops and defines each major chakra along the spinal column, creating a whole world or states of consciousness that man can live and gain valuable experiences from on his journey back to the Godhead, crown chakra. As the Shakti power falls, it becomes more and more engrossed in mind substance and solidified energy, which means that the cosmic energies are restricted and slowed down to the point where it becomes so heavy that the great power it possesses cannot be demonstrated without control of the binding forces that have placed this great that have placed this great limitation on it. So when this Shakti power reaches this point of the spine, it has a combinative experience of all the above and below chakras, which demonstrate itself as stored potential power in regards to the above chakras as stored samskaras and in regards to the chakras below the Mulahara chakra. When the Shakti power reaches its lowest point and it then makes its way back to the lowest equilibrium of consciousness, 
is the spine. Before it does, it expresses itself through hundreds of minerals, plant, and animal species before finding its way back to this equilibrium point of consciousness called the Mudahara Chakra, where the Shakti power falls into rest or a dormant state of consciousness, where it reveals its inner Shiva and wraps its Shakti part around it three and a half times, expressing the balancing points of consciousness. For it is here where the intelligence of good and evil is realized and man gains his self-consciousness. It is here where the three and a half energy configuration reveals the pathway of evolution back to the Godhead. It is here where the Bindu expresses OM three times, giving life the basic substance or principle of the entire phenomenal or manifest world, Prakriti, composed of the three gunas, Praguna, or attributes, Tamas, Rajas, and Sattva. Tamas is the gunas that represents darkness and inertia, which is one of the three gunas of nature, Prakriti. Rajas are the gunas of nature, Prakriti, that are characterized by restlessness, activity, and ambition. Sattva is one of the three gunas of nature, Prakriti, which represents the pure or equilibrated state of mind or nature. The following table outlines the expressed powers of the Mudahara chakra and the three and a half coiled chakra configuration that brings into manifestation that thing we call Kundalini. Fourteen, the dormant state, so the dormant shakti power of Kundalini. In the face of spine, the dormant shakti power of Kundalini coiled three and a half times at the Mudahara chakra. And the first coil, and the mantra represented, measured, when it's in time and space, is the first OM. And the time sequence represents its past. Uh, the guna quality is tamas, represents the walking, waking state, sorry. Three types of experiences are subjective. The second coil, it's the second OM mantra, represents the time sequence of the present. It's guna quality is rajas. And its state is sleeping. The type of experience is sensual. The third coil is represented by the third OM mantra, which is the time sequence of future, and its guna is sattva, and its state is the dreaming state. This type of experience is absence. And the final half coil, its mantra state is transcendence, and since time of beyond, the guna quality is beyond, as well as the state and type of experience. Mother Earth is a cosmic being that controls and conditions all the subtle and gross forces that permeates its existence. Just as the core power of this great being lies hidden under its great layers of Earth, thrust, yet its magnetic force propels all nature toward forward and sustains all life. Mankind and Kundalini power propels all active force within man's subtle and gross bodies. Its offspring, the human body, has the same natural characteristics. It has this internal power called Kundalini in within it, the subtler frames that maintains and sustains it throughout its many earthly reincarnations within its subtle and gross vehicles of expression. While this Kundalini lays dormant at the base of the spine, the Hara Chakra, its magnetic force or power is like vibrating tentacles that vibrates throughout the Nadi system of man's subtler nervous system that makes up the etheric body and helps to create the various levels of man's consciousness. The Nadi system has three major types of Nadis that transmit cosmic energy throughout the man's subtle and gross bodies. There are the Pingala Nadis, 
a positive flow of cosmic energies, the Ida nadis, negative flow of cosmic energies, and the Shushumna nadis, which is the flow of both positive and negative cosmic energies. These nadis are located throughout the body. In fact, they are the subtle background of man's existence. The base of the spine chakra is the first state of self-consciousness for man. It is that state where man can say, I, or I am. It is that state of consciousness where man begins to build his own layers of positive or negative charged samskaras that begin to shape and mold the auric bodies of man from his self-conscious state of thoughts and actions. Up until this time, the auric units or layers that make up this complex etheric subtle bodies have been impregnated with the base mental animalistic instinctive cravings and desires of its past samskaras, mental impressions or scars of previous incarnations. Now with the drawing of the self-consciousness, the individual is no longer being guided by the subconscious mind. The diva of the mental bodies and subconscious mind will always follow the divine laws of God. This is the part of the animal kingdom that we call nature when we say nature is guiding the animal kingdom. In the animal kingdom, their goal is to reach the Mudahara chakra, which brings them to a self-consciousness state. To them, Mudahara chakra is what the Christ and Kaun chakra, Ada chakra, Sarathara chakra, is to us. In the Mudahara chakra consciousness, man begins his journey of evolution through living in a self-conscious state. And in this state, he also operates on an unconscious state of mind and a subconscious state of mind. The Mudahara chakra is the first major chakra that man works through as a self-conscious being. Each major chakra along the spinal column region represents a specific realm of existence and level of consciousness. The base of the spine chakra, Mudahara chakra, is the level of consciousness where man was cut off from the lower animal world and the higher spiritual world. It is the middle passage, the end of the animalistic experience and the beginning of a self-conscious existence. This plane of existence is where man emerges in the Maha Maya conscious existence. The great illusion as an individual that is separated from the whole or absolute God. Kundalini is the primary dormant life force within the body of mankind. It is that power lying deep within the base of the spine chakra, the heart chakra. This energy force is the primary life force of man's consciousness. The tantric doctrines tell us that it is the microcosmic shakti power within the human body. Tantric philosophy describes this shakti power as the power that the soul uses to form the great illusion, Mahamaya, of individual consciousness as it descends to the base point of consciousness, the root of man's existence, Mudahara Chakra, and lodges himself in the constant cycle of samsara, the wheel of rebirth. It is said that when the Shakti consciousness of mind and pranas being driven by the will of the soul reaches the root chakra, Mudahara Chakra, it falls into a dormant energy configuration that's called Kundalini that moves man's consciousness from the whole to the not whole. This omni-awareness that the soul shared with the spirit in a limited capacity force is lost by the effects of the dormant energy configuration. This energy configuration of Kundalini, Shakti, is described as being in an energy pattern that resembles the three and a half coiled serpent that blocks the doorway to Shashumna. Shashumna is man's 
pathway or passageway to his higher and more expanded levels of consciousness. Jashumna is the inner channel of the spinal column where the bindus of the six major chakras along the spinal column reside. This higher consciousness can only be experienced by Kundalini rising and traveling through Shashunda and activating the various chakras that reside along the spinal column within Shashunda. Now the action of this dormant energy configuration of Kundalini Shakti blocking the passageway to Shashunda activates and perpetuates the separation of the Shakti power. The separation of Shakti power signifies man's limited conscious awareness. It is the whole becoming not whole. It is the five elements splitting and manifesting its opposite aspects. It is the five major pranas of subtler forces manifesting the five minor pranas of gross physical forces. It is the heat within the Shakti power manifesting itself as the Pingala Nadic force with positive, charged, subtle, and gross energies. It is the cooling factor within the Shakti power manifesting itself as the Ida Nadic force with negative, charged, subtle, and gross energies. Lana, are you just waving goodbye or are you saying you have a question? It is the magnetic energy that lies between those two opposite forces that holds mankind in a constant flux, not allowing him to see the true stillness of consciousness. This magnetic flux is the Mahamaya, the great illusion that mankind lives and makes his being within. The subtle magnetic flux that lies between the positive and negative forces is the residue of consciousness that mankind strives to exist in life after life. This residue of consciousness that formed out of the formation of the dormant state of Kundalini creates a separation of the Shakti power manifest basic consciousness. The separation of Shakti power brings into being a huge desire factor that permeates throughout the manifested gross substances. This desire factor or comma factor holds the mind substance that ignites the basic consciousness of man to pull on either the positive charge Shakti power, male, or the negative charge Shakti power, female. Now the split of these pranas, cosmic energies, brought about the magnetic pull to these opposite forces. This magnetic pull can be considered or recognized as the place where man's many desires and passions arise from. With the conscious awareness being split up into thousands of directions and narrowed down to a single level of awareness, it creates a basic consciousness that gravitates toward either a positive charge energy flow, which is a male vehicle of expression, or a negative charge energy flow which is a female vehicle of expression. Once the soul uses these two as vehicles of expression, they have a huge magnetic attraction to each other that lasts for lifetimes and countless reincarnations. Mankind craves the opposite sex, not realizing that it's the great illusion, the Mahamaya, and that it's only the side effect or the I becoming the not I. This craving becomes a driving force of man's basic astral and physical existence. It is the sex impulse, the vital life force of the subtle level, and it's the vital life fluid on the physical level. Now, can you follow the logic? Man's true consciousness operates from a state of shashumna, with a positive and negative flow of prana travels and operates in one direction. The illusion that comes over him 
when the soul encases itself in these various vehicles of expression, stops him from realizing his true identity. The male and female sex impulse is the magnetic flux that came about from the undulini power born dormant, or the I that is the soul operating through the shashumna, becoming not I, which is a split of consciousness or the various chakra levels, operating through a chakra with a primal energy source that's either Ingala, a male energy, or Ida, a female energy. The great magnetic flux between the two is expressed as desire and passion for the opposite sex, which creates a huge distortion of mental substance that these desires fester and live in. Can you understand that within the body, the Pingala flow of force is primarily a vital flow of chronic energy, and the Ida flow of force is primarily a mental flow of energy. So neither force can ever be separated from each other because they totally depend on each other for their existence. Prana shadows mind, and mind shadows prana, because both are one and one are both. And their only real existence is the living fires of consciousness when it is expressed through shashumna, when the positive and negative flow of prana travels and operates in one direction. The shashumna nadi is the meeting place of all three major qualities of energies that flows through the physical and subtle bodies of man. It is here that positive charge cosmic energy, chronic forces, and the negative charge cosmic energy forces join together and travel in one direction, with one purpose in the sabda vibrational force to bring about higher states of consciousness. When this Pingala Nadic force and Ida Nadic force join together, it manifests a third force which is a neutral charge flow of energies called a shashumna nadic flow of cosmic energy. Both Bengala and Ida Nadi energies travel around the major chakra system thousands of times. Each nadic force travels from a different direction, right to left and left to right, north to south, and south to north. As these nadic forces move around the major chakras, it identifies over 100 major, minor, and minute chakras. These visible and invisible chakras pull on these nadic lines of force in order to mold and shape the different qualities of shakti force within it. The Pingala nadis has a quality of vital life force that distributes itself throughout the body. The Ida Nadis has a quality of mind Shakti force that distributes itself throughout the body. The Shashunda Nadi positions itself between the right Pingala and left Ida Nadis, which creates a straight line of force from the Mudahara Chakra to the Sarahara Chakra. This Shashunda Nadic flow of energy carries a Shakti quality of the preservational forces all cosmic energies. The Shashumna Nadic line of force holds consciousness in manifestation on several planes, lokas of existence, and allows man to gain countless lifetimes of valued experience. It is said that the Shashumna Nadi has three inner channels that seem to compress all the qualities of Shakti force of the Nadic and chakra system into one minute channel that pushes upward and forward, opening the major chakras and giving tremendous power over the cosmic energies and mind energies, placing man's conscious awareness on a supra-conscious level. The first layer of the Nadic vibrations within the Shashumna Nadi is called the Vajra Nadi, a conduit inside the central channel that extends from the genital region 
to the head region. The Vajra is described as a hard diamond-like substance, hard but lustrous with the light and power of thunderbolts. It is said that this layer of the Shumna Nadis, the Vajra Nadi, is the place where the sexual energy Ojas connects with the brain. Ojas is the highest form of base physical manifested energy in the human body, which is connected, which is a, sorry, which is a concentrated form of semen. The second inner layer of the Shashuna Nadi is called the Trita Nadi. This configuration, the configuration of this Trita Nadic force is of a sattvic quality, a pure shakti force for fire, agni, sun, surya, and moon, chandra. At its highest level of equilibrium throughout every level of its channel. These three energy configurations are known as the three aspects of sabda brahman. Within the trita nadi, is the Brahma Nadi, where the pure cosmic energy of evolution flows as the power of Kundalini. It is the Kundalini power that travels through the Brahma Nadi, where all major chakras reside. As the Kundalini power passes through this channel, it opens each chakra that resides along this inner path of the Shashumna's Brahma Nadi that brings man from a limited conscious state to an extended or expanded conscious state. The sex energy. The sex chakra, Svathisthana chakra, is where the seat of man's consciousness resides. The Sanskrit word ba means one's own, and the Sanskrit word adhisthana means residence or dwelling place. This chakra is the life-giving force of the subtle bodies and gross physical body. It regulates the vijnana pranas throughout the human system, subtle and gross expressions. It is a place where life is initiated on the gross physical plane. It is also the place where the physical brain an instrument of translating mind substance is influenced heavily from the sex chakra, Pakistana chakra. The sex chakra engages or triggers the physical brain to use the frequency of its pranic forces to maintain and sustain the gross physical consciousness. This chakra is the second chakra along the spinal column line of major chakras. Its presence is easily recognized within our physical environment. Considering the makeup of our present science and technology today, all of our technologies are based on a positive and negative charge energy particles that come together in order to produce usable energy. When you have an electrical machine, it has an electrical male plug that is inserted into an electrical female receptacle. And when the two are joined together, a free flow of controllable and usable energy is produced, which animates the machine to a usable instrument. When you have a combustible engine, the engine is the female component and the fuel is the male component. When you place the fuel in the engine, the mixture of the two produces energy that drives or animates the engine into a workable instrument. This chakra activates the mind substance to a level where man lives and operates on the mind frequency that flows through the sex chakra, Svarasthana chakra. In other words, the sex chakra produces a level of conscious awareness where its environment is molded into the laws of that shape and energies energizes the mind substance. Our environment today is largely manifested from the frequency of mind substance that originated from the sex chakra conscious level. The bindu power that's expressed at this level gives the supreme static power of storing all conscious memories, all unconscious memories, conscious movements, 
and involuntary movements within the subtle and physical bodies. The sex chakra is the level of consciousness or shakti power that the soul uses to formulate the subconscious mind. The energies produced from the thoughts and actions of our past daily lives are looked on or called memories. The tantric techniques, the tantric teachings call these memories samskaras, which are tiny bits of energy patterns that builds a unique and personal collage of energy patterns that produce its own pressures of karma on the auric bodies. The combination of these samskaras or collage of energy patterns dictates the karmic pressures and karmic patterns that each individual must experience according to their own actions. Samskaras are like seeds that have been planted within the auric bodies, waiting to blossom under the right conditions. The right conditions are when the karmic pressures that hold the energy patterns together within the auric bodies begin to loosen, and these samskaras or energy patterns manifest themselves through the current expressed personality and level of consciousness that the soul is working through at that time. The sex chakra bindu creates a wave of endless potential that makes itself available for the sonic vibrational force at play here to mold and shape this flow of energy frequencies into levels of consciousness that manifest a quality of power. This power manifested here from the bindu gives man the ability to maintain consciousness in a limited fashion through the expression of storing the past and present activity of thoughts and action of man's experience through life within the mental bodies in an unconscious manner to man's conscious mind. The sex chakra is the home of the superconscious mind. The base of the spine chakra and sex chakra govern or produce the energy formation that builds and maintains the subconscious mind within the mental bodies that the soul's consciousness works through. The superconscious mind is the instrument the soul uses primarily for all of the following things. You, you're saying you're saying super, and when it's subconscious, it's the home of the subconscious mind. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize that. The sex chakra is the home of the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is the instrument the soul uses primarily for all the following things. The subconscious mind is used to store all past and present thoughts and actions of man's experiences. It not only records the events of the thoughts and actions, but stores the residue of power that contains the energy configuration that holds the karmic pressures that are produced from these stored thoughts and actions. The subconscious mind regulates the energies throughout all the bodies, physical, astral, pranic, mental, and etheric bodies. In the pranayama studies, it shows that out of the five major pranas, the vijnana prana, located at the sex chakra, moves forward and radiates throughout the entire body. This Vyana pranic force regulates the vital life energies of the body, producing an involuntary level of consciousness and animated levels of self-consciousness that works in concert with each other, which allows the functioning of the machine-like vehicles called the physical body and astral body. The subconscious mind uses the largest portion of the mental bodies, and it takes care of 100% of the functions of the physical body and subtle bodies. The energies radiating from the sex chakra pervades the whole body, recording, sustaining, and maintaining the laws dictated by karmic pressures produced from the thoughts and actions. The sex chakra produces the subconscious component of the auric body that acts as the divic forces of karmic pressures that conforms all of man's thoughts and actions 
to the pressures of the divine laws of God, karma. It is the layer of the auric body that receives the seeds of samskaras and stores them as fuel to be manifested at the right karmic time or burned up in the karmic fires of purification produced by the right thoughts and actions of each individual. In certain theosophical circles, it is believed that this chakra was the base chakra at one time before the fall of mankind, placing his basic consciousness at the base of the spine chakra. Each chakra produces sonic vibrations from the main bija, seed metra, of the chakra and petals of that chakra. These sonic vibrations produce a particular formation of energies that express a level of consciousness. The bija, or seed mantra for the sex chakra, which is B-A-N, produces six petals or letters, which are tiny bits of sonic vibrations that mold the shakti power, cosmic powers, and mind energies that configure the mental bodies into an instrument that stores the energy patterns of all its thoughts and actions. The tantric and raja yogic teachings describe this as samskara, mental scars or mental impressions produced from the life experiences of each individual, creating karmic patterns that take them lifetimes or reincarnations to transmute back into a positive balanced flow of shakti power. This bindu power, bija power, and the six petals power make a magnetic pull on the tantric rays from the sun that is conditioned by the earth. The tantric doctrine states that the 62 fire, earth, tantric rays are embedded in this chakra, creating a harmonic balance over the subtle and gross cosmic energies. The six petals are the embedded chakras, mental impressions, of the soul. It holds the power signatures of the initial manifestation that brought forth these forces of the chakras. It is the sonic sound that calibrates the 62 tattvas to mold and shape cosmic energies into subtle and gross matter. The Mudahara chakra pulls the Shakti force down into the darkness of the Tamas Gunas quality and holds it there with its inertia power. This darkness and inertia of the Shakti consciousness brings about a separation from the whole to the not whole. This not whole state of darkness activates the power of the Ragas Gunas, the second Gunas where it sinks the Shakti consciousness force into an active state of restlessness where the Shakti consciousness in an ambitious fashion seeks to become part of the whole again. Although this Shakti force is in a base and weakened state of consciousness, the Shakti conscious force are not totally aware of the whole, but feels the inner presence of that power. This feeling of the inner presence is the pure sattvic gunas, the third gunas, state that represents the pure or equilibrated state of mind or nature which is the force that holds this Shakti consciousness. The sex chakra, Swatisthana chakra, moves the Shakti force or consciousness to a physical self-conscious level that embeds self-consciousness and unconsciousness with an empowered subconscious state that stores eons of samskaras, which is stored mental impressions with huge megabytes of karmic pressures that can be activated under the right conditions. In order to operate through this maze of trigunas, three coils of light states are formed, the waking state, sleeping state, the dreaming state. In Sanskrit terminology, this is called pranayama kosha, which is the coils of life. The waking state, Sanskrit terminology for this is Jagrat, is a positive state during the daytime.
This is a result of the five major pranas being influenced by the sun. The pranas flow north to south and east to west, giving a positive charge to earth and within the body of man. The sleeping state, and the terminology for this is svapna, is a negative state during the nighttime. This is the result of the five major pranas being influenced or affected by the moon to the earth. The pranas flow from south to north, west to east, giving a negative charge to earth's subtle and physical bodies. And a subtle and physical body and the subtle and physical bodies flow of pranas within the body of man. The dreaming state in Sanskrit chupti is the negative flow of prana, where the consciousness operates in as one energy in a sacred place of balanced consciousness. Is a neutral. A neutral like. flow of prana. Oh, sorry. Is the neutral flow of prana, where the consciousness operates in as one energy in a sacred place of balanced consciousness, Shashunna. In this state, man is connected to the waking state and sleeping state. Both the positive and negative pranic flows and connects to create the third state, Shashunna. The seed mantras are the six petals within the sex chakra, which are the nadic flow of prana that is streaming through the vortex center or chakra. When the power of Kundalini rises, these seed mantras are used to activate specific purification qualities and sprout the growth of certain powers of Kundalini within the body through the nadic system. Some of the main purification qualities produced from this chakra are as follows. One, the power to dispel fallibility. Two, the power to dispel suspicion. Three, the power to dispel mistrust. Four, the power to dispel contempt. Five, the power to dispel delusion. Six, the power to dispel disinclination. Seven, the power to dispel false knowledge. And eight, the power to dispel pitilessness. Symbolism. This chakra represents the subconscious mind of man's mental makeup. It is here where the cosmic energy manifests itself physically. The chakra begins life, sustains and maintains life through his subconscious mind. It is fitting that the element of the sex chakra is water, with water being the symbol of purification. Water is also the giver of life and the sustainer of life. In fact, over 70% of the body is water, just as 70% of the Earth's surface is water. The sex chakra produces the energy configuration that allows the etheric and auric structures to collect the life experiences produced from the thoughts and actions of man and store them as mental power impressions. These collective mental power impressions become like karmic seeds, like karmic power seeds that place limitations on man's actions, which are called muscaras. The solar plexus. Manipura chakra, solar plexus, is the third major nadi knot along the spinal column. Ascending from the base of the spine, through the shumna, the inner core of the spinal column. This chakra is considered to be the city of jewels. There are two Sanskrit words that make up the name of this chakra, Manipura. The Sanskrit word mani means jewel, and the word pura means city. The popular meaning and perception of this chakra is considered to be chakra where the city of jewels resides. It is the chakra that expresses the power of the sun. It is this chakra that powers the full human structure. The soul of man configured the shakti consciousness 
of this chakra to manifest the power of the sun and sustain this fission force of this power and continuously radiate this sacred power throughout the subtle structures and the gross physical structures during its incarnations on the physical realms of existence. The solar plexus chakra is the storehouse of prana or cosmic energies. It is the conjunction point of prana. In the science of pranayama, there are five major pranas mentioned, which are prana, apana, samana, udana, and vijnana. The conjunction points of the major pranas at this chakra are the flow of prana moving downwards and upwards, the samana flow located in the solar plexus region, and vijnana flow that travel throughout the body, and finally the flow of apana traveling upwards and back downwards. The first major flow of prana, prana, travels up and down between the solar plexus chakra and the throat chakra continuously. The second major flow of prana, apana, travels down from the solar plexus chakra to the base of the spine chakra and back to the solar plexus chakra continuously. As the first major prana ascends toward the throat chakra from the solar plexus, the second major prana, apana, moves from the base of the spine chakra to the solar plexus chakra. When the prana falls from the throat chakra back to the solar plexus chakra, the apana flow of prana falls back to the base of the spine chakra. In basic man, the karmic pressures don't allow these two pranic forces to completely join together. When man has purified the nadi pathways that carry the prana and apana energies, a balancing of these pranic forces is karmically allowed. Then the combined force activates the Manipura chakra and accentuates its power, accentuates the power of this chakra, giving man the ability to operate on higher levels of consciousness. In the practice of pranayama, one of the main goals is to balance these two major pranas through the control of rhythmic breathing, which encompasses an even flow of inhalation and exhalation of breath and measured retention of breath with the incorporation of concentration and visualization. The control of prana and apana helps to gain control over the other three major pranas, which are samana, udana, and vijnana. Samana is a major prana that is mainly concentrated in the navel area. The udana major prana is concentrated in the throat area. The vijnana major prana is located throughout the entire body. If you were to study any balanced pranayama system exercises, you will notice that they activate five major pranas, which essentially assist in purifying the nadi pathways so man can operate on higher states of consciousness. In the Manipura chakra, you have several sonic components that originated from the soul's manifestation of the Nadak Shakti power. The Nada Shakti power moves the Shakti power in action through a vehicle of self-consciousness that shapes and configures all Shakti power into various forms of self-expression that the soul uses to gain experience in the most basic levels of consciousness. The following are the presence of the soul and the Nada sound expression the soul. Number one, Chakra Bindu. The presence of the soul, the house of the spirit. This is the point of consciousness where soul configures and expresses the Nada Shakti power out of a Shiva state of being to manifest the Bija or one syllable seed mantra of the chakra. Number two, Manpura Chakra Bija. The bija for this chakra is the holy sound of RAM, and this is a sound vibration used by the soul to bring a stagnant of the soul's consciousness into being. It is this one syllable mantra that gives life to all the other bodies that operate on the Manipura realm of existence. It is the conscious will of the soul directing and configuring 
the cosmic energies Shakti into many modifications of expression. Number three, 10 chakra petals. The bija or sound vibrations give manifestation to the 10 chakra petals or 10 Sanskrit letters, which are the nadis being pushed through the chakra vortex center, assisting the soul in creating a level of consciousness with the intersections of the flow of Shakti power passing through the vortex center, configuring the 10 petals and producing the sound vibrations that manifest the consciousness. Number four, the 52 tantric rays it is calculated to be the configuration of the 52 tantric rays or modes of motion under the influence of the Bindu force of the mighty sun, manifesting the power of building, maintaining, and preserving all life within the human structure and assist in the development of the human structure on all the realms of existence. Number five, nadis extends from the chakra petals as thin tube-like lines of force that carries the nada shakti, the shakti as mind, the shakti as the bhutas, and shakti as the tantric force. The nadis from each chakra builds an etheric or auric body that acts as an instrument that holds consciousness in place by pulling the shakti power or cosmic energies into a matrix that arranges the shakti to express various qualities of the Shakti under the control of consciousness manifested by the soul and directed by the spirit, man's divine spirit of God. Number six, Grantinat. Grantinat is a Shakti conversion. Here is the Bindu force of the mighty sun, the Surya, Eva, Ru. These holy sun vibrations that make up or initiate the flow of cosmic energies within the chakra when calibrated properly, naturally purifies the chakra and the associated nadis. The seed mantra and petals, letters, are the sound vibrations that I'm referring to. It is said that the mantras and the divas are one. In fact, all movements of cosmic energies within the chakras are the result of a mantra being resonated by the soul. The resonated mantra by the soul activates the divas of that chakra, which oversees all movement of cosmic energies, making sure that all the karmic pressures are accounted for. The purification of this chakra and the associated nadis move any obstruction within the pathways of the nadi system up to this particular chakra, allowing the concentrated flow of Kundalini to move through this purified section unobstructed. This chakra configures the energies that manifest the physical systems and organs that make up the digestive system and the organs that store and filter the energy resources which passes through them, such as the stomach, small and large intestines, the liver, the kidney, and the bladder. The element that is manifested through this chakra is fire or tijas, which is demonstrated by the physical organs that correspond to this region. The activation and opening of this chakra allows man to conquer disease and death. Also gives him the ability to exit and enter the body at will. At this level of development, man has moved beyond the basic mental astral realms and begins to exist on the higher mental astral realms. The intuitive and psychic abilities of the chakra are highly enhanced. I think we'll stop here and we'll pick up with the higher centers next time. Are there any final questions? Is there anything you wanted to add, Nehemiah? No, I'm, do, you, do you think I use too much Sanskrit terminology here without explaining? No, you, you explain the, the terms you use. Okay. It seemed like when we when I when I was explaining the uh, sex chakra, I used a lot of terminology and 
I didn't parenthesis it or didn't footnote it. That's why I was asking. I think you, I think the first couple of times you use the terms, you ex, you you explain what they are, but then okay. as you go on, you don't keep adding that back in. And that's fine if that's usually. All right, then. So let's go ahead and close out there. Right, there's no final questions. Let us conclude the day session. Uh, hey, I, Dwayne, can you put the 12 blessings link in a calendar thing so it can post to the calendar for Thursday nights? I mean, on, 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 on Meetup? Well, no, well, when you email it to me, because I have to hunt for it. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Let's recite the new Lord's Prayer. Divine and wondrous spirit, O everlasting Lord of hosts, send forth now through me thy great and lasting power. Allow me, almighty God, the lasting privilege of radiating to all the world thy great love, so that those who suffer may be given the power and energy to rise above their weaknesses. Almighty God, in great humility do I ask you to send forth your power, to give to me this great lasting privilege of being a channel so that my suffering brothers may be helped and guided and healed and lift it into thy life, so that they who know not may look up, and in doing so, receive for their higher selves your divine counsel. Almighty God, this day have you granted me a divine privilege. I ask you now to give to me the strength, so that never again will I turn from my inner vision of you. Oh, great peace, great peace, great peace. In praise of your greatness, O oh God, doth my soul sing. Grant it energy to sing on forever and forever. Everyone, thank you very much for your attendance and participation. Do you remember to take a look at those? those what? Previous classes, sorry, Metaphysics 101, that playlist. Review those lessons. And if you have any questions or any additional comments, you can feel free to email those to us. We'll get those answered for you. Next time, have a wonderful week. Okay. All right, thanks, Duane. Thank you, Mike.